Alright, Shalom, Shalom, Israel is brother Kazak Magan. First and foremost, want to give all honor and glory to the Most High Yahweh. We do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, who the world may ignorantly call Jesus Christ. Right? So, um, it's your brother Kazak coming at you with another quick cold cut. Um, today we're gonna be tackling, you know, we just gonna be pulling out cuts on a virgin birth, man. You know how to cut the virgin birth. That's what we that's that's what we going into, man. You know, because this is a this is a uh a stronghold of Christianity that been that uh that been plaguing the minds of our people, man. You know, for for ages now. You know, thinking that Yahweh Shai was born without a father. Thinking that thinking that Mary, you know, just woke up pregnant with a baby without even having sex, man. You know, that's that's it can't happen, man. You know. But we finna we finna go into it. But first I wanna grab this. This is the book of Second Corinthians, right? The book of Second Corinthians, chapter ten and verse four. Right, that's what I want. Second Corinthians ten and four. It says, "For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds." Right, so our weapons ain't carnal, but they mighty through the Most High. Hey, what's our weapon? This is our weapon right here, the Word of the Lord. You know, it says it's mighty through the Most High, mighty through the Holy Spirit. You know, mighty through Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai to the pulling down of strongholds. Because what? The true Word of the Most High is gonna trump any false doctrine, man. You know, and that's what we finna do today. We finna trump this false doctrine of the virgin birth, of the immaculate conception, man. Right? It says, it says, uh, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Hamashiach. Right? So that's what we finna do, man. You know, so, um, you know, they say a lot of times. You know, I think I heard, I heard, yeah, I, I did hear this doctrine before. They say Mary is an eternal virgin, you know, eternal meaning she, she's a virgin forever. She never has sex. You know, that's what they say. But this can't be true because Jesus, even if you said that Jesus, I mean, Yahweh Shai was, um, was immaculately concepted, like born without a father, you know, he had other siblings, you know. Jesus, Yahweh Shai had other siblings. So you can't say, you can't go off the limb and say that Mary was an everlasting virgin, right? Because we see that she had other kids besides him, right? This is the book of Mark. Let's prove that real quick, you know, because you got to prove to these people. Let's go to the book of Mark, chapter 6 and verse 3, right? Book of Mark, chapter 6 and 3. Schlock, yeah. I'm going to start at 2. It says, and when the Sabbath was... And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and in and many hearing him were, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, "From whence, from whence have this man these things? And what wisdom is it is this that is given unto him?" Right. So they're like, "How the hell do he know these things? You know, how how is he able to go through? How is he able to go through the scriptures and break these things down?" How did he get this wisdom? How did he get this knowledge and understanding? Where did this come from? This is the same brother who we seen grow up since a, uh, from a baby all the way up to a grown man. You know, this is the same brother that been walking walking up through here. He is a carpenter. How did he get this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding? Is this the same man that we've been knowing? They talk about Yahweh Shai. This is these are the, uh, these are like his neighbors, his fellow citizens. This is this is what they saying about him, right? It says it says, and what wisdom is is this which is given unto him that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands like how is he doing these miracles how is he doing these things right it says verse three here go the point is not this the carpenter the son of mary the brother of james and joseph and uh, and joseph and of and of judah and simon and are not his sisters here with us and they were offended at him so he has siblings you know he had he had joseph right jew Simon, James, you know, that's four brothers right there, you know, and he, and it says he even has sisters. So how is Mary an everlasting virgin, man? You know, when she had other kids, her and Joseph had more kids than, other than Yahweh Shai, man, you know, but let's go to how his birth was go. Let's go to how his birth, you know, because this is where the doctrine comes from right here. You know, let's go to it. Let's deal with it, but it's got to kind of deal with it through the spirit. You know, so this is the book of Matthew, right? Chapter one and verse 18. Like I pray my little uh, chill music ain't too loud. But this is Matthew 1 and 18. It says, Now the birth 
of uh, Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother, Mary, was espoused to Joseph, right? They was espoused together, meaning what? They was engaged, you know? The dowry probably wasn't paid yet. They didn't have the marriage ceremony. They didn't, they wasn't really together together. They was just, you know, proposed to be together, you know? that Like, like say you proposed to your woman, or back in the ancient world, you know, you basically wouldn't even propose to a woman. Y'all, y'all marriage would probably be set up by y'all parents. You know, y'all parents would come together with an agreement. You know, this family and this family, they'd come together and say, you know what, I'm going to give my son to your daughter. You're going to give your daughter to my son. And that's going to bring a union between our families, make us more powerful. You know, those things, those are called, um, it's like, it. what's, what's the, um, what's the term that I'm looking for? It's escaping me right now, but those those are uh, you know, basically where the parents where the parents would set up the marriage for them, you know, that's that's how that would go back in the ancient world, you know. And we see these things, we see other we see other marriages, you know, um, we see other marriages throughout the scriptures, you know, happen in this way, you know, prearranged marriages, you know, an arranged marriage, you know, between the parents and all of that, you know, that's how it went back then, right? So I'm going to read that again. This is Matthew 1 and 18. It says, Now the birth of, of Yahweh Shia Mashiach was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, right? That's that's They take that little part right there, before they came together. They take, they take those four words and they make a whole doctrine out of it. It says, Before they came together, she was found with she was found with child of the Holy Spirit, right? So it says, Before they came together, she was filed with child. That key point, what you got to understand is that before they came together, this before they came together is before the ceremony, before the con the, before the marriage contract was written out, you know, before, before the feast that you would have to commemorate the marriage, you know, that's, that's the, before they came together, you know, because we see, we see back in the ancient world that, when two people were married, you know, hey, it's weddings. You know, you would have a wedding, you would have a ceremony, you know, you would uh you would have a marriage contract written out. You know, let's just go, let's get an example of a marriage in the scriptures. So like let me grab my other Bible. Let's get an example of a marriage in the scriptures, and then we're gonna get an example of a marriage contract in the scriptures as well. Right? Because you gotta go through precept upon precept. Right? So this is the book. This is the book of John, right? The book of Saint John, I believe I want. The second chapter con the book of st. John chapter 2 right it says and the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee right so marriages marriages was common right you know a wedding ceremony it says and the mother of Yahweh Shai was there and both Yahweh Shai and both Yahweh Shai and his disciples to the marriage right so they was all at the marriage ceremony it says and when they went and when they want to wine, the, the mother of Yahweh Shai said unto him, they have no wine, right? So they was at the marriage ceremony. They want to wine because why? At a marriage ceremony, you want to eat, drink, and be merry. Hey, y'all kicking it. Y'all celebrating this union of this man and his wife, right? You celebrating it. The family is celebrating the two families coming together and uh basically, you know, uh increasing in power, you know, increasing in riches, increasing in friendship and, and a bond, you know. That's what that's what marriages that's what uh that was that was the purpose of marriages back in the ancient world, right? So you see that they had wedding ceremonies. You can even you can even read about that in the book of Tobit, which we're about to go to now, right? This is the book of Tobit, right? The book of Tobit, chapter seven and verse. I'm gonna start at. I'm gonna start at um. Twelve, right? I'm, this is the book of Tobit, chapter seven and verse twelve, right? It says. Reg Regal said, "Then take her from henceforth according to the manner, for thou art her cousin, and she is thine. And the merciful God, and the merciful God give you good success in all things." Verse thirteen. We get into the point. It says, "Then he called his daughter Sarah, right? So Regal he called his daughter Sarah, who was finna be the wife of Tobias. It says, then he called his daughter Sarah, and she came to her father, and he took her by the hand and gave her to be wife." I mean, gave her to be wife to Tobias, right? So he kind of took her hand, you know, and put her hand inside Tobias' hand, right? And it's, and it's going to further explain what else they did, right? Gave her to be wife to Tobias saying, Behold, take her after the law of Moses and lead her away to thy father. And he blessed him, right? 
and called Edna his wife and took paper and did write an instrument of covenants and sealed it, right? So they, they wrote out an instrument of covenants, right? So they kind of, it said his wife, you know, her mother, Edna, Sarah's mother, she took a piece of paper, wrote out the instrument of covenants, wrote out how much the diary was, wrote out he wrote out that he paid the diary, wrote out they both of their names. You know, it's basically like a marriage certificate. You know how Esau having these uh Esau having the world today, you sign a marriage contract, you I mean you sign a marriage certificate when you get married. And we had that back in the ancient world, man. You know, it says according to the law of Moses, you know, we had to write out a marriage contract and we had to pay a diary, man. Hey everything you should want to you should want to get it in writing, man. You know, this is the book of Syrac, chapter 42 and verse 7, right? You should want to get everything in writing, right? It's this Syrac 42 and 7. It says, deliver all things in number and weight and put all in writing that thou givest out or receivest in, right? So you want to put everything in writing. Hey, Mary and Joseph, they married. Hey, it wasn't in writing yet. They didn't have the ceremony yet. They didn't have a feast. They didn't have a dinner. They didn't have a wedding. They didn't have an actual wedding. But before those all, before all those things was uh was to be done, hey, they kind of snuck off together and kind of had sex. That's what it was. It says before they came together, you know, hey, she found out that she was with child of the Holy Spirit, you know. And it's when they explain this. So like you, yeah. I'm gonna go to uh this. Let's go back to Matthew one and eighteen and read it again, right? Then we go go to Luke. It says, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit, right? Before they came together, meaning what? Before the ceremony, right? She was found with child of the Holy Spirit, right? It says, then Joseph, her husband being a just man and not willing to make her a public example was minded to put her away privately, right? It says he being a just man, he didn't want to make her a public example. You know how old, you know how, um, you know, your grandma or, or your, or your, um, or, uh, your grandma or your elder or somebody like that, they kind of say you, you, uh, you had a baby out of wedlock, you know, you had a, you having kids out of wedlock or, or you kind of move in with your girlfriend and y'all don't really, y'all ain't really have a marriage ceremony. Y'all don't, y'all ain't sign no marriage certificate. Y'all just kind of shacking up. That's what they say. They say shacking up when shacking up is not, is nowhere in the Bible, you know, but they say you shacking up. They say you having kids out of wedlock because y'all ain't have y'all ain't have no actual y'all ain't have an actual wedding ceremony to uh to commemorate y'all being together, right? So Joseph, he wasn't with he wasn't with kind of you know having a baby out of wedlock because he was royalty, man. And he is of the seed of David, man. Let's go to that. You know Joseph was royalty, you know, and he kind of had a name for himself, right? Let's go to the book of Luke, Selakia, chapter two, and verse. I'm going to start at verse 2, right? This Luke 2 and 2, it says, And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Sy of Syria, and all and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city, right? And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of and lineage of David. Hey, if you part of the lineage of David, you royalty, man. Because why? David was the king, man. And out of David's line came all the kings, man. You know, and that's a key point that we're going to need. Because, hey, the prophecy said that that the uh, the everlasting king would come out of the lineage of David. So the Bible just told you right then and there that uh, that Joseph had to be uh, Yahweh Shai's father because Joseph was of the lineage of David. It don't say Mary was of the lineage of David. It don't say that nowhere in the scriptures, but it says Joseph is, you know, and if, and for Yahweh Shah to be the son of David, you know, he had to come out of the lineage of David, you know, Salakia. But, uh, but yeah, that's what I wanted right there. But let's go to Luke, the Salakia, what is that? All on? Um, Luke, the first chapter and I believe I want Salakia, Luke. One and uh, bear with me. It's like yeah, we could hold on. Come. We could drop that 
and um yeah let's get let's get how the savior was to come out of the lineage of joseph we gonna grab that you know because they try to say first let's prove yeah let's go to the book of uh second samuel chapter seven right second samuel chapter seven because we just saw that joseph was of the lineage of david right so let's see what the prophecy about David is, right? The prophecy about the seed of David. This is uh, 2 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 12. It says, And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom, right? And this is, you know, right after David, you know, Solomon came into reign, right? They both reigned 40 years each. It says, he shall build a house for my name, right? Speaking about Solomon, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Hey, so did Solomon reign forever? No, Solomon reigned 40 years, man. You know, Solomon reigned 40 years. So he didn't reign forever, right? So like, let's grab that. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Let me grab my other Bible, All right? Let's go to the book of first Kings. First Kings, I think I want the eleventh chapter. Right, this is the book of First Kings, chapter eleven and verse forty-one. It says, "And the rest of the acts of Solomon and all that he did and his wisdom are they not written in the book of the acts of Solomon? And that and the time that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel was forty years. So Solomon only reigned for forty years, right? But the Lord just told David." That his seed after him would uh would be like uh his seed after him he will establish his kingdom forever, right? Who is the who is the uh who is the king that will reign forever? That's Yahweh Shai. Let's talk about Jesus Christ, man. Right? Let's keep reading. I'm gonna read verse 13 again. It says, "He shall build a house. He shall build a house for my name, and I will and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men." And with the stripes of and with the stripes of the children of men did that happen to solomon you know did that happen to solomon did, did solomon uh, solomon did commit iniquity but did he get but did he get chastened no solomon went to sleep with his fathers man you know he had 40 years of peace let's go back to it let's go back to first kings it's like it first Kings, the 11 chapter right and verse 40 right first kings 11 and 40 it says, and Solomon slept with his fathers. First Kings 11 and 43. And Solomon slept with his fathers, right? Meaning what? He slept with his fathers. He went to sleep and he, hey, he died in peace, man. It says, and was buried in the city of David, his father. And Rehoboam, his son, reigned in his stead, right? So Solomon, he died in peace, man. He died in peace. But the Lord just said that this king, he was he would chasten him with the stripes of men. Right? Let's talk about Yahweh Shai. He got chastened with the stripes of men. You know, hey, to, I mean, if you have ears to hear, Yahweh Shai was Solomon. You know, he was Solomon through the regeneration, man. You know, that's why he got chastened. You know, that's part of the reason why he got chastened, because Solomon never, Solomon never received that punishment for him going off committing idolatry. You know, but he did receive that punishment in his life as Yahweh Shai. Right? That's a whole nother topic, though. That's the regeneration. You know, go check out that regeneration breakdown. That brothers did uh on the channel right but uh going back to second samuel 7 right it says verse um verse 15 it says but my mercy shall not depart away from him as i took it from saul whom i put away before thee and thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee thy throne shall be established forever right and this is all talking about yahweh shai because yahweh shai is going to be that everlasting king that is going to reign, you know, through this, through the seed of David, man. You know, let's go to the book of Romans, the third, I mean, the first chapter, right? The book of Romans chapter one, you know, because it always says, it says that Yahweh Shai is the seed of David, man. You know, this Romans chapter one and verse three, it says concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David. What is the seed? A man's seed is his sperm. A man's seed is... You know, I don't want to get too vulgar, want to get too vulgar, but you know that's that's you know that's the stuff that come out. You know, a man's seed is his sperm, man. You know, it says concerning his son Jesus Christ of our Lord, 
which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, man. According to the flesh, meaning what? David was his forefather. And in order for David to be his forefather, you know, hey, Joseph had to be his father, man. Because we just read in Luke, in Luke, the second chapter, uh, verse 6, I believe verse uh, verse 4 through 6, it said that Joseph was of the lineage of David, man. You can't get around that, right? You can't get around that. Let's get some more cuts to show that Joseph was his father, you know, and then we go get into how, you know, he couldn't have been immaculately concepted, you know. It's the book of John, chapter 1, and verse 45, right? Because everybody around Yahweh Shai knew who his father was. You know, everybody knew that Joseph was his daddy. Everybody knew Joseph and Mary, you know, they kind of did that, man. You know, ain't no way around it. You know, this is John 1 and 45. It says, Philip findeth Nathaniel and saith unto him, we have found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Hey, that's plain. That's plain, man. It said Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph, right? So like, let me turn this air conditioner on. It's starting to get too loud. Right. So I'm going to read that again. It says, uh, this John 1 and 45. It says, Philip findeth Nathaniel and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write. Jesus of, Na Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Right. So like I said before, that's plain, man. It said right there, plain as day, he's the son of Joseph. Right. Let's go back to the book of Luke. Right. Let's go back to the book of Luke, the second chapter, and read verse 41, right? Luke, second chapter, verse 41. It says, Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of Pass at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child, Yahweh Shai, tarried behind in Jerusalem, right? So they kind of, they, they went up to Jerusalem every year for the Passover as, as is commanded, I believe. And uh, you can read about that in Deuteronomy uh, 16 and 10, I believe. Uh, 16 and 10 on down, we have to appear before the Lord three times a year. You know, you got the Pentecost, the Passover, and the Tabernacles, I believe, right? But, uh... So they was up there for the Passover in Jerusalem. And it says, verse 43, uh, Luke 2 and 43, it says, And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child, the child Yahweh Shai tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. Right? So they kind of left him. They didn't know, they didn't know that they thought he was probably in a wagon or something like that. You know, they just kind of, you know, Joseph just kind of, you know, pushing up, pushing the horse and all that. You know, they riding in a the wagon. They hold on, you know that. We missing somebody, you know, that and Yahweh Shai was still in Jerusalem in the in the synagogue, man. You know, in there in there asking the uh in there having conversation with the teachers, man. You know, on kind of like on home alone. You know, when the parents got on the plane, when the parents got on the plane and, and, and they kinda they, they took off and they landed and all that, they was like, We forgot Kevin. Oh my like that's that's how they was, you know. They was like, We forgot Kevin, like damn, we didn't forgot our damn son. At the damn crib. We we think of everybody with us the whole time. We didn't forgot our damn baby boy at the crib, man. You know, so this is kinda of, they, they kinda of forgot Yahweh Shai there. You know, but he did he he kinda of tarried behind because he still wanted to talk with the doctors and and the uh and the teachers of the law in the synagogue, man. Verse 44, Luke 2 and 44, it says, But they supposing him to have been in company and went and went a day's journey. So they traveled a whole day. They traveled a whole day, didn't know where he was at. You know, didn't know that he wasn't with them. And it says, and they sought him among their kinfolk and acquaintance. Right. So they was kind of looking for him. They was like, they was asking their cousins. They was asking the elders and all that. Have y'all seen, have y'all seen Yahweh Shai where he at and all that? It says, and when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem. So they went back to Jerusalem to see if he was still there. And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple sitting in the midst. So like they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of doctors both hearing them and asking them questions, right? So they said he was sitting in the midst of the doctors. The doctors are the teachers of the law. The doctors would be the scholars back then. You know, they was they was real fluent uh, in Genesis 
through all the rest of the prophets. They was real fluent in that. Through Genesis, through Malachi, they was real fluent in that. You know, those are those will be the doctors. You know, the teachers of the law, the teachers of the Bible. They was always in the temple. You know, that was basically the scholars back then. It says both hearing them and asking them questions, right? So he is asking them questions, deep questions too, man. Yahweh Shai had a lot of understanding for a child that was 12, man. You know, and it says, and all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and his an and answers, right? So they was, they was astonished because what? This little 12-year-old boy, you know, he knows so much and he can understand so much about the scriptures. He can understand them deep, dark parables. He can understand all of that. You know, they was, they was surprised at that, you know, because it's uncommon. It says, and when they saw him, when his parents saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Like, why, why, why you, why you, like, why did you do this? You know, why, why you, why you just kind of disappear on us? You know, where was you, where you been at? You know, why you just kind of disappear on us? It says, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrow. Right. So Mary said, your father and I, we have been looking all over for your ass. We sorrow when we thought you lost. We lost. We thought you. Uh, we lost you. We thought you probably got kidnapped or something. You probably out here dead. We probably gonna find your body just laying in the midst of the road or something. You know how parents be thinking. You know when they can't find their kids. You know they start thinking everything. They start thinking the worst things. You know, it says, and he said unto them, how, how is it that ye sought me? Like how, how is it that you ain't that you was looking for me and ain't. He was like, how is it that you sought me? Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business. He was like, so how how was it that you was looking for me? Y'all ain't y'all ain't uh y'all ain't think that I could have been, you know, in the temple being about my father's business? Like that ain't come across y'all mind, you know? And this is the key point right here. And it says, and they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. Right? So they ain't understand that. You know, they cause he said, you know, he was like, Y'all, y'all ain't think it ain't come across y'all mind that I'm about my father's business. You know, that I was being about my father's business, that I'm in his temple, you know. So if if the most high was actually Yahweh Shai's father, you know, then why did why did Mary and Joseph, you know, not understand what he was what he said at that point, you know? Because why? You know, that his father's business, he was a car Joseph was a carpenter. You know, so if if Yahweh Shai was about his father's business, they would have found him, you know, being up being uh doing some carpenter work, you know, kind of building stuff, you know. But he's they didn't understand what he was talking about. You know, because why? You know, because Joseph is his actual father. You know, that's why they, it was a hard saying unto them. It says, and they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. They was kind of looking at each other confused. Like, the hell he talk about? Like, I'm this boy daddy. Like, you, if you was about your father's business, boy, you'd be doing some carpenter work. You know, but they didn't understand that he was talking about, you know, the most high. You know, so like it. He was talking about the heavenly father. You know, they couldn't understand that. Right. So let's go to the book of Acts right chapter 2 and verse 29 right acts 2 and 29 another way to show another another cut to show that yahweh Shah was of the lineage of david man you know it says men and brethren let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch david that he is both dead and buried and his sepulcher meaning his grave site is with us unto this day Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with an oath unto him that that of the fruit of his loins. What is the fruit of your loins? Your children. Your children are the fruit of your loins. I got two kids. They the fruit of my loins. You know, my mother my, and my father. Hey, I'm the fruit of their loins, man. I'm the fruit of my father's loins. Right. It says that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh. Hey, you can't get around that. According to the flesh, he will raise up Hamashiach to sit on his throne, right? Hey, so that's according to the flesh, man. Let's go to the book of wisdom of Solomon, the seventh chapter, right? And you can't get more plain than this one right here. This wisdom of Solomon, chapter seven and verse one, it says, I myself also am a mortal man, right? This is Solomon speaking. I myself also am a mortal man, like to all, and the offspring of him that was first made of the earth, right? Because we the offspring, we all the offspring of uh of our forefather that came before us, you know. It says, and in my mother's womb, and in my mother's womb was fashioned to be flesh in the time of ten months, right? In the time of ten months, you know, uh, you know, they say, you know, you're pregnant for nine months in the time of ten months, you know, because the Hebrew calendar is different. You know, our calendar, we uh we actually have 30 day months, you know, in our uh what we have. 360 day years right so it would be the time of 10 months you know a pregnancy would be 10 months back then in the ancient world 
you know, depend, I mean, uh, basically on how our calendar would go, right? So it says, and in my mother's womb was fashioned to be flesh in the time of 10 months, being compacted in blood of the seed of man, right? And the pleasure that came with sleep. What is that pleasure that come with sleep? That's you and your wife having sex, man. You know, that pleasure that come with sleep is you and your wife having sex, right? It says, and, and the pleasure that came with sleep. And when I was born, I drew in the common air and fell upon the earth. Because back then, women would have their children standing up. They say it was easier. They say it's easier to have your baby standing up, you know, because the gravity kind of, you know, gradually pushes, pushes down, you know, and the baby would just kind of just fall on the, fall on the ground as it was born, right? Nowadays, they have, you know, women have children, they kind of land on their back, which don't make sense because it makes it harder, you know. But um, it says, so like, and fell upon the earth, which is of like, which is of like nature. And the first voice which I uttered was crying. And as all others do, I was nursed in swaddling clothes and that with cares. For there is no king that had any other beginning of birth, right? So that's plain to say there is no king that had another beginning of birth besides that, man. You know, that's the only way, that's the only way a man could be born. You know, with the pleasure that comes with sleep, being made, being, um, what is it? Um, being, uh, conceived, man. You know, hey, that, that sperm going into the egg, man. You know, that has to, that has to happen, you know. The most high, he's not, the most high is not, is not, um, is not flesh. The most high, the most high doesn't have sperm. Angels don't have, and they say a lot of times that angel, that an angel got Mary pregnant. You know, that the Holy Spirit came down and had sex with Mary. Hey, it's only one type of flesh, man. You know, it's only one type of flesh of men. You know, angels and men can't have sex, man. You know, it's not possible. Let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians, the uh, 15th chapter. Right? 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I believe I want to start at verse 40. Right? Oh, so like, I'm going to start at 39. It says, um, 1 Corinthians 15 and 39, it says, all flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men. So it's only one kind of flesh of men, right? So if Yahweh was born, you know, with, with a, uh, with an angel being his, being his biological father, then how, how would that even happen? How would that even happen? Like he was, he was made like unto his brethren, man. Like we go grab that next. It says all flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies, which what are the angels, right? The angels, they have celestial bodies, right? And it says, and bodies terrestrial, because why? That root word in terrestrial is, is terra, is terra, which means earth, right? Earthly bodies, right? But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another, right? Meaning what? They two different things, man. You know, you can't bring two different things. A damn, um, a damn, um, a damn man can't have sex with a damn animal and have a baby with it, man. It doesn't work like that. It's not the same flesh. An angel can't have sex with a human and, and, and have a baby, man. It's, they don't have the same flesh. It doesn't work like that, you know? So all flesh is not the same flesh. So like Yahweh Shai was made like unto his brethren, man. You know, let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter two, right? You got to break these things down, man, because our people, they so, they so, um, you know, drunk off the wine. They so drunk off the wine of these false philosophies and doctrines, man. It's Hebrews 2 and 16, right? It says, for verily, he took not on him the nature of angels, right? So he didn't take on the nature of angels. If his father, if his father was the Holy Spirit, which if his father was an angel, you know, then then I mean if he was born by an angel, then he would have he would have took on the nature of an angel. But no, he didn't do that, you know. It says, For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. You can't get around that. He took on the seed of Abraham. And in order to be a seed of Abraham, you have to come from the lineage of Abraham, right? And we don't count women. Women don't women don't get counted in the lineage. You know, it goes through the father, right? Let's go to the book of Ezra, right? Let's go to the book of Ezra to show that women don't, don't count in the lineage. You know, you count it by the father. Let's go to Ezra, the second chapter, 
and verse uh, 53, I believe. It's Ezra 2 and... Uh, so like it, what was that that I wanted? Um, Ezra 2 and 50... Which could not show their father's house, Salakia. Bear with me. Mm. Huh. The book of Ezra, chapter 2 and 59. Right? It says, And these were they which went up from Tel Malah, Tel Harsa, Cherub, Adon, and Emer, I mean, Imer, but could not show their father's house. And and their seed, whether they were of Israel, right? So that's how you show that you're Israelite, by your father, by your father. It goes by the seed of the father, right? Your mother doesn't show that you're Israelite. The Jewish man today, the so-called Jewish man, the so the white, the, the Amalekites that's over there, they say you're a Jew by your mother. Your mother makes you a Jew. How does that make sense when it's the father that drops the seed, man? You know, you could plant a damn, you could plant a damn apple into an orange field. An apple tree is going to grow, you know? That's 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 this that's 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 how it works, man. You know, that's genetics, that's biology. You know, you can't get around that. You know, so showing your father is who you come from. You know, if there's nothing inside of the womb besides egg sacs, you know, besides the egg sacs, in order for a baby to, to grow in a room, I mean to grow in the womb, hey, a father, a man has to come and put that sperm, put that sperm inside of the womb. You know, a man has to do that. So chiefly, you come, you come from your father. You know, it's it's not that hard to understand. It's not that deep. You come from your father. You come from your father's sperm, right? And your mother is just like an incubator, like an oven. You know, you're just inside your mother processing. But you wouldn't have been there if it wasn't for your father putting you there. You come from your father, right? So that's why a so-called white man, if he has sex with a black woman, I mean, if a so-called Edomite, which would be a white man, you know. If he has sex with an Israelite woman, you know, or a so-called black woman, then that baby will be an Edomite because that because that baby, the spirit, the spirit of that baby, you know, it came from the father and the father was an Edomite. So that would just be, you know, a dark skinned Edomite, you know, or a light skinned Edomite, you know, instead of having that same that pale, that uh, that nasty pale red skin. You know, it would kind of have some melanin because what it was made with the it was made with a dark skinned woman, but still that baby came from an Edomite came from an Edomite man, you know. And if an Israelite man had had sex with a had sex with an Edomite woman, you know that baby would be an Israelite, you know, because why an Israelite man was the one that planted that seed, you know. Let's go to the book of Numbers, right? Let's go to the book of Numbers, chapter one and verse eighteen. Just to get another precept on that. Book of Numbers chapter 1 and verse 18. It says, it says, and they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigree. What is your pedigree? Your breed. You know, you kind of, you kind of, uh, you buying a dog, you know, you buying a dog, you be like, okay, what's the dog's pedigree? You know, what's the dog's breed? You know, they gonna say, they gonna say his father, the dog's father was a pit bull, the dog's mother was a pit bull, so the dog is a pit bull, right? That's your pedigree. It says, and they assemble all the congregation together on the first month, I mean, on the first day of the second month, and they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers, right? So your mother's, your mother's uh, lineage doesn't matter. It's your father's lineage because that's who that's the lineage that you're a part of. That's the lineage that you came from, your father, right? So how will Yahweh Shai be an Israelite? How will Yahweh Shai be an Israelite if God was his father? Is God an Israelite? God is not an Israelite. You know, the Holy Spirit is not an Israelite. The angels not Israelites. You have to come from the seed of Israel to be an Israelite. You know, you have to come from the seed of Abraham to be of the seed of Abraham, right? So how would how would Yahweh Shai be an Israelite or of the seed of Abraham if the Most High was his father, if the Most High was his biological father, if he didn't have a biological father, a father on earth, you know, and Mary just woke up pregnant, how would that, how would that work? You know, how would he be an Israelite? It only, it says you, the only way you could tell you're Israelite is by the, is by the house of your father, right? So, you know, it's, it's just common sense, man. You know, it says, uh, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names from 20 years old and upward by their poles, right? So, hey, 
Ain't no getting around that, man. Let's go back to Hebrews real quick. Finish that out. Hebrews chapter 2. And back to verse uh, 16. Salakia. Hebrews chapter 2 and back to verse 16. It says, It says, um, For he took, It says, For he took not on, For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham, right? Meaning he came from that lineage. It says, wherefore in all things it behooved him, right? To be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest and that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people, right? So he had to come into the flesh he had to be born as a normal man so he would know what it'd be like to go through that temptation. So he would know what it would be like to uh to face to face those demons and battle those demons on an everyday basis. If he came as an angel, he wouldn't be able to be tempted. If he came, if he came as uh if he came as uh if he came like in any other way besides besides the way that a normal man is born, he wouldn't be able to know what we go through. He wouldn't be able to know what it feels like. What it feels like to uh to battle to battle the flesh every day you know and that's why that's why he wanted to come into the flesh as he was you know as he did you know because so he would have so he would be more merciful upon us you know and he would truly understand what we go through on a day-to-day -day basis you know battling this flesh battling them lust demons you know battling battling the, uh battling the anger of, of uh when somebody trespass against you and you and you uh you gotta you gotta kind of forgive them for what they did because it's part of the commandments, you know, battling, battling, and holding grudges and all of that. You know, he had to battle all those things because why he came into the, he came into the same flesh as us, man. You know, and that's why he wanted to do that. So he would be more merciful and understand truly what we go through, man. You know, let's go to the book of Romans chapter eight. You know, just to show this, man. You know, it's not that deep. You know, it's not that hard to understand. It's like, it is the book of Romans chapter eight and verse two, right? It says, for the law of the spirit of life and Hamashiach Yahushai have made me free from the law of the sin and of death. For what the law could not do, that for the, for what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And so like it, in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, condemn sin in the flesh, right? So he came in the likeness of sinful flesh. The most high can't be tempted. The most high can't be tempted. You know, so like, let me see if I can grab that. Let's go to the book of James real quick. Got to kind of prove to Jake. You know, the most high can't be tempted. You know, so if Yahweh Shai came, if, you, if Yahweh Shai was the actual, you know, biological son of the most high, he wouldn't be able to be tempted. You know, if he didn't come in that same flesh as we did, he wouldn't be able to be tempted. You know, and Yahweh Shai suffered that temptation after he dwelt uh, 40, 40 days and 40 nights fasting in the wilderness. It say that Satan took him up to the high mountain to tempt him, man. You know, but the Most High can't be tempted. The angels can't be tempted. Because why? They not in the flesh like us, man. They got the celestial bodies and we got terrestrial. Right? This is the book of James, the first chapter. James 1 and... Salakia, so like, what is that? Verse 13. It says, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil. So the Most High can't be tempted, right? It said, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. The Most High can't be tempted, and the Most High don't tempt you. And he gave Satan a job to go tempt. You know, so the Most High ain't the one that's tempted you. That's Satan, right? So you, so the Most High, he can't be tempted. Yahweh Shai, he came in the likeness of sinful flesh. Why? So he could feel that temptation. Like we just read in Hebrews, like we just read in uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse 3, man. You know, it's playing upon tables. It's not that deep, right? So, like, I wanted to grab something else. Um, um, so, like, yeah. Um, what else do I want to grab? Come on, let's go to the book of Isaiah, right? I don't want this to be too long. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. So, like, yeah. I want to grab this in Jeremiah 20, 23. Bear with me. Mm. 
I'm gonna grab this first. Right? Let's go to the book of Isaiah, the 11th chapter. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, and verse, verse 1. It says, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, right? And the branch shall grow out of his roots, right? And who is that branch? That branch is Yahweh Shai, man. You know, it says, I'm going to read that again. It says, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and the branch shall grow out of his roots. Who is Jesse? Jesse is the father of David, man. You know, let's grab that real quick. Let's go to the book of Ruth. Right? Let's go to the book of Ruth. Right before Judges. I mean, right after Judges, Salakia. Ruth, the last chapter, chapter 4, and verse 22. It says, and Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David, right? So Jesse is David's father, right? But this says, and there shall come a rod, there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and the branch shall grow out of his roots, right? Who is that branch, right? Who is that branch? Let's go, let's go to that, right? Let's see who the branch is, right? This is the book of uh, Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 5. It says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, right? Meaning it's gonna come out of the, it's gonna be a, Dav a Davidic king, meaning he's gonna be so like of the seed of David, man. It says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and the king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Who is it talking about? It's talking about Yahweh Shai, right? He's that righteous branch. He's that branch that came out of the uh came out of the stem of jesse man it says be, it says in his days judah shall be saved and israel shall dwell safely right and this is his name whereby he shall be where, whereby he shall be called the lord our righteousness right let's talk about yahweh shai man let's go to isaiah the seventh chapter right another prophecy right this isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14 it says therefore the lord shall give you a sign right Uh, I'm going to start at 13. It says, and he said, hear ye now, O house of David, right? Is it a small thing for you to weary men? Be, but will you weary my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And let's talk about Yahweh Shai, right? It says a virgin shall conceive. So a Christian might try to take you there and be like, it said a virgin, it say a virgin. What is a virgin? A virgin is a woman that never had sex. First off, that's wrong. That's wrong right there. That's not true. You know, back in the Hebrew, in the Hebrew, that word for virgin is Alma. Alma means a young unmarried woman uh, or a young woman of marriageable age, right? A young woman of marriageable age. Let's prove that, man. Let's prove that with a precept. Let's go to the book of Genesis, right? A young woman of marriageable age. It doesn't mean that she necessarily never had sex before, right? This is the book of Genesis, right? Chapter 26. I mean, it's like a chapter, uh, yeah, I think that's, no, a lot, uh, that's not what I want. Genesis chapter 24, right? Genesis chapter 24 and verse 16, I believe. Right? Talking about Rebecca. I'm gonna, uh, jump to verse 15. Right. And it came to pass before he had done speaking. Right. Talk about uh, Abraham's servant. You know, the Lord. Uh, I mean, not not the Lord. Abraham sent his servant, you know, to go uh, to go get a wife for Isaac. Right. And this is after Sarah died. You know, it says, and it came to pass before he had done speak before he had done speaking that behold, Rebecca came out who was born to Bethuel, son of milk, son of Milka, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother with her pitcher upon her shoulder. And the damsel was very fair to look upon, meaning what? She was beautiful. She was fair to look upon, right? It says, a virgin, right? A virgin. Do that mean she never had sex? Neither had any man known her. So if it's, it says a virgin, meaning what? She was of marriageable age. She was young and of marriageable age, right? And if if that virgin meant she never had sex, then why would they have to come, come, uh, come harder and say, neither had any man known her? That puts a distinction between those two. A virgin, meaning what? She's a young unmarried woman or a young woman of a, of marriageable age, right? 
neither had any man known her. What does it mean to know somebody? Let's go to the book of Genesis, the uh, fifth chapter, I believe. Right? Let's go to Genesis chapter. It's like it. Let's go to Genesis 4 and 1. Right? It says, and Adam knew his wife. Right? He knew his wife, meaning what? They had sex. Right? It says, and Adam knew his wife, and she conceived. And bear, us, and bear Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord, right? So Adam knew his wife and bear Cain, right? She, he had sex with her and she conceived and had Cain, right? Had Cain and Abel, right? So uh, let's go back to Genesis 24 and 16. It says, and the damsel was very fair. She was beautiful, a virgin. She was young and of marriageable age. Neither had any man known her, right? Meaning what? She never had sex before, right? It says... And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up, right? So let's talk about, you know, hey, that proves that proves that uh, a virgin is a young woman of marriageable age. You know, not how society says today, a woman, a person that never had sex before. That's not what it's talking about, you know. But uh, I didn't want this to be too long. Let me think if I uh, got another one. So like, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm going to pull one more. I'm going to pull one more in the book of Acts. You know, book of Acts, the 13th chapter, and then I'm going to close out, you know, and Lord willing, we cut this, Lord willing, I uh, edified you, and now you're able to cut this doctrine to shreds, man, you know, this the book of Acts, chapter 13, I believe I'm on 21, Acts, chapter 13, and 23, come, on. Acts, chapter 13, and 22, it says, and when he had removed him, he raised up unto unto them David to be their king, right? To whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will, right? Of this man's seed, meaning what? Of David's seed, God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a savior, Yahweh Shai, right? So of the seed of David, the most high, according to his promise, which he made to David, raised up unto Israel a savior, Yahweh Shai of Mashiach. Right, so with that, I want to be Israel Hardy Shalom. Lord willing, you got the understanding that Yahweh Shai has a mother and a father, which was Joseph, you know. But, um, kind of, I want to say Shalom to Israel, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Brakatham. You know, stay stay mighty, stay diligent, reading, praying, fasting. You know, uh, we almost up out of here, man. Shalom.